Hi, I'm Joe Smith. I'm the chair of the Originals Only Fine Art Group, uh, which is a program that's operated through the town of Comox under their recreation department. And we host a show once a year. It's an outdoor show at Marina Park in Comox. And we get uh, artists from all over Vancouver Island who come to this event. And it's usually 40 to 50 artists who set up in canopies and tents uh, in the great outdoors. My name is Debbie Salmon. For Originals Only, I got started by hearing about the Originals Only through um, art groups. And uh, so I signed up for it and bought the canopy and the grids and all the hangers and um, found the experience was um, really quite nice because there was a lot of camaraderie with the, meeting all the other artists and getting the input from all the other viewers. Um, I really enjoyed the whole experience. This is our 15th year of the Originals Only. We, when we started it, we just had really had a handful of artists uh, who were mostly local. Uh, but the whole idea of the show was to develop a event that was specifically focused on the pure forms, or what we call the pure forms of fine art, painting and sculpture. Uh, the one thing about the Originals Only show is that any artist who exhibited had to exhibit original work. So there were no uh, limited edition prints or, or mass reproductions. Uh, we wanted to put the emphasis on original art. So I've recently started doing pet paintings and using photo references. And this one here I, I did in acrylics and it's quite detailed and changed the background to be a little bit more interesting as this one is in snow, but this one is in snow, but with color. So I really enjoy doing that and plan on doing a lot more commissions of pet paintings. Right from when I could pick up a pencil, I was drawing with uh, lots of encouragement from my mother, who's also very artistic. Um, I always drew, painted, colored from elementary through high school, took courses. Um, I went on to college. Um, I first started taking, um, after high school, courses, evening courses, and I took a multimedia course, and this one changed my direction because the uh, teacher said I should you know, entertain the idea of becoming a graphic artist. And I'd been working at the newspaper for 31 years, right up until last April when I took an early retirement. So, um, and, well, I've been in the originals only, almost from the start. Uh, I've been doing art forever and ever. Um, but now it's full time for me, so I'm doing what I love to do. That's one of the other things that we're trying to do with the Originals Only show is to uh, get people to understand the amount of work that an artist uh, puts into it. And it's not just sitting down on a Sunday afternoon uh, and doing a painting or a sculpture. Uh, it's all of the years that they've put into the knowledge, the techniques that they've learned, um, just the ability to understand all of the, the color combinations, uh, that takes time. And that's one of the other main things that we're trying to promote with the Originals Only show is uh, the amount of work that goes into a piece of art. Uh, it may look simple, but there's in many cases years and years and years of experience that goes into that. In my case, many of my paintings start with a drawing. And for example, this is a very small uh, on-the-spot sketch that I did years ago and I thought well there's someday I can probably use that for something. Um, so I dug this out um, looking for a, a piece of art to do and I decided well I wasn't going to do the whole frame so I just kind of took this part of it which you can see here and so that's uh, how this particular painting started to come together. Um, so in, in you know, a lot of people think that an artist just sits down and starts dabbling away uh, on a canvas. Well, it doesn't always work that way. And in my case, I like to be able to do a relatively detailed drawing uh, before I actually put paint to canvas. 
Uh, this helps me with my, my direction, it helps me understand the actual design of the painting. And to me that's very important, you know, you, you've got to be able to build on that. And I guess it's my experience over the years because of uh, the different aspects of art that I've been involved in. Everything from uh, doing uh, advertising, uh, print advertising, uh, where you had to lead people's eyes through the ad from the headline to the to the image to the actual body copy and so you're basically doing the same thing with a painting you want people's eyes to be led through the painting so that's how a lot of my paintings start is I look for those directional signs uh, in terms of uh, how I want somebody to, to view the painting they might not think that they're doing that um, and that's good because I don't really want them to think about that. I want them to think of the overall uh, image of the painting. And uh, so, uh, but as you go along with a painting like this one here, um, I'm sort of working on, on uh, building that sort of depth to it. Um, so you start off with a very dark background and then you begin to use lighter and lighter colors as you go along. Um, these trees actually, they were originally uh, birch trees. Uh, but I've decided that uh, I'm going to turn them into Arbutus. Um, again, it's, that, that's the artist's prerogative. That's, uh, you know, artists can do that. I mean, here's one of my lines here uh, that you can see the, the arc going through here, but it stops here. Uh, and then, then you've got this big uh, sort of block, if you will, you know, that, that brings the eyes back in. So the, the, my, what I'm trying to do is, is get people to sort of focus on the center of this painting. So everything is kind of circled around that. So even though this one looks like it's going out of the frame, um, it's actually stopped by this one here, which then takes your eye back here. So I'm trying to get people to focus on this. And then what they will see is they will see the whole painting uh, all at once, rather than sort of looking at bits and pieces of it. But then they can sit back afterwards and take in all the different aspects of it. It always starts with a drawing and I encourage people especially you know people that are just getting into wanting to do uh, learn to to paint um, I suggest take a drawing course you know understand the principles of drawing understand perspective understand design uh, because when you start off uh, as a new person you know getting into the world of art uh, you're faced with a blank canvas now you're trying to do a whole bunch of things you're trying to um, learn your colors you're trying to learn uh, the the paint you're working with and you're also trying to learn to draw at the same time. So this is all at once. So my suggestion is uh, learn to draw first. And well, actually that's when you went to art school, that's what you, you, you had to do. You had to learn to draw before you could actually sit down and start painting. So sunflowers, um, I took various photos of sunflowers and they tend to grow all at the same height and to create more ambiance and interest. Um, I took the photos at different angles and I put them, put the uh, sunflowers at different heights and introduced the uh, Queen Anne's Lace, because um, I love Queen Anne's Lace, um, and just created this as a composition and went to work on it in acrylics and over top the acrylics I worked in oils. And I love working in oils because it has such a buttery texture and gives me much more time to play as it stays wet for so much longer. Now one of the things about the Originals Only show is that it is open to artists of all levels. So everywhere from emerging artists, uh, we have special rates for students. Uh, who are participating, we'll say, in the Emily Carr School, uh, to artists who have been around for 20, 30 or more years. Uh, so it's really open to a, a broad range of artists and the whole idea is to uh, provide some form of education for the general public. To, they can see how artists progress over the course of time. And I think if they looked, you know, if they visited us during our first year, they would have seen some of the artists because they've been with us ever since. And they would have seen the progression of the artist's work over those 15 years. Uh, and some of the art today that we have, it's, 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 it's spectacular. So this painting is called Comox Glacier and Blue Heron. And I also composed this one. 
Um, so I took a photo of the glacier and the sky was just a plain blue and I brought in the violets in here from the blue heron and there's some violets in here and the water I created a, a little bit of a mist in here put in some of the reeds so this is all my creation the blue heron is a photo reference and I often take my own photos for photo references you know our art of course is something that has been going on for centuries. Um, we see it continuing on, um, you know, and, until uh, it gets to the point where I think, um, you know, if, if, well, I guess the biggest challenge in the Comox Valley these days is that uh, we're becoming more of a seniors uh, community. And uh, one of the things that we do find is that some of the artists who started with us 15 years ago will say when they are 60 are now 75. So in some cases, they don't have the physical ability uh, or the health, you know, to continue on. So what we're hoping for is that we get younger and younger artists. So, you know, hopefully the valley and the island will start to attract younger people. I mean, we keep hearing about that, um, but uh, we haven't seen them, a great many of them materialize at the Originals Only show yet. So that's what we're hoping for, is to get a younger um, a group of artists, you know, participating in the show. Uh, and we realize it's difficult for a lot of them because a lot of them today, they have a day job or what they call a day job. And then art is something that they do after hours or on the weekend. Um, so it makes it difficult for them to get involved sometimes with these kinds of events because they have to give up so much. Uh, but the future is, uh, if we can get younger artists, uh, you know, that's, uh, the, well, the show can go on forever. I mean, some of these art shows have been going on. 50, 60 years, um, especially here in the Valley, some of the events, you know, are celebrating their 50th or 60th anniversaries. Twenty seventeen is a year to celebrate. In the summer of love, 1967, when color and art was bursting onto the scene, in the Comox Valley, a group of artists, activists got together and they looked into the future. Their goal was to make an umbrella organization to bring together the visual arts, theater, dance, literature, and performing art. The Comox Valley Community Arts Council. Alice Bullen, founding member of the Comox Valley Community Arts Council, now known as CV Arts, set up a partnership to work together with the Courtney Youth Music Centre, which started that year as well. They worked on a program, the Summer Program of Music and Theatre for Local Youth. So Alice, it's 50 years since the Arts Council was established and you were involved at the very beginning. What brought everyone together? I think we were brought together because each individually was supportive of the performing arts and we didn't have anything happening here uh, to allow the performing arts to be presented to the public. So we formed a non-profit society. CV Art Strength is forming partnerships with emerging arts and cultural initiatives, building the heart of the community as advocates for all genres, improving public policy and access to the arts, and connecting and motivating teams of volunteers. Sometimes over 500 volunteers make an event happen. I guess it all began in uh, Vic Victoria or Vancouver, and they were looking for a summer place for the students to be housed and the music to be performed and executed in a smaller environment than the city. 
and somebody directed them to the Comox Valley. Years later, Corinne Ennis, on the board of the Arts Council, scouted musicians in Vancouver to teach at CYMC. I knew a lot of the musicians that came over for CYMC, and Alice mentioned um, Robert Creech, Bob Creech, and who is an, a, a personal friend, and um, he um, he wanted, just as Alex explained, that he wanted a, a smaller community to, to have students come in the summer. And his family, um, part of his family had a farm out Merville Way and he used to spend summers up here. Kate Farley remembers putting in different performances every single night in the summer. I started in about 1978. I had a kitchen shop at the time and uh, I started as a volunteer with the CYMC and then the kitchen shop began to not be really lucrative so I got a job as year-round administrator. That's what I was called, an administrator. And um, I also remember Bob Creech as he left on the train after that summer in 78, 79, saying, oh, I'm so glad we've got someone here all year round. <laughs> and I found out why he was so glad, because it was a lot of work. <laughs> Over the years, art facilities grew, such as the Sid Williams Theatre, the Little Church Theatre, the Muir Gallery, and the Comox Valley Art Gallery. Andy McDougall, CV Arts President in the 80s, was an instructor at North Island College and now at Watier. He's also a master screen printer and great musician and was instrumental in setting up the Renaissance Fair, Art in the Park and eventually Vancouver Island Music Festival. Well, I arrived in Courtney. I was here, I don't know, in the early 70s and really liked it. And I came back, I think around 1975 and um, my first experience of the Comox Valley Art Council was the Arts Alliance building up on McPhee, actually down the street from here. Uh, and I was a musician at the time, and I remember going there to, I don't know, Wednesday night jams and meeting a number of people that I'm still friends with today. And we formed a couple of bands back in the day and then we also played at uh, uh, some of the first Renaissance fairs that were held in Lewis Park. In the 90s, North Island College was established and artists were moving to the Comox Valley in greater numbers. The Comox Valley earned the designation the cultural capital of Canada, with more artists living here per capita than anywhere else in Canada. Alan Burgess was president of CV Arts in the 90s. He helped to set up the Muir Gallery and he established a successful pottery program at North Island College. So North Island College was quite small in those days. Oh, very small. Yeah, we had we didn't do we didn't have an art program. We had a collection of art um, university courses and there was no department as such. Uh, it was in rented space and um, we didn't get an art department really until we moved up to the Courtney campus when that was built and we started the two-year diploma program, which David McLean and I designed originally. In the 90s, the old fire hall on Duncan was renovated to become the art centre, not to be confused with CV Art Office upstairs. Over the past 50 years, the population of the Comox Valley has grown three times. The arts have grown immensely. But the CV Arts has remained a virtual internet administrative council with very little visual presence. One of the biggest things we do is go out there and you know help make sure that the arts is alive and happening here in the valley and that there's proper credit being put out to the people that deserve it. So a lot of times um, we don't understand or see what's happening. You know, they, it just, we just get so used to seeing things. We don't realize that somebody has actually made this mural. Like it's not just a picture on the wall, right? So the Arts Council can present that in a way and make it more valid here in the Valley. Today, CV Arts is involved in the Philberg Festival, wall murals, kids' art, performances, atmosphere, colours, Elevate the Art, Foggy Mountain, Studio Tour, 
CVAG Member Art Exhibit, Poetry Contest, Poet Laureate, and the 30 Day Challenge. This year you're going to be celebrating your 50th as well. Yes, we have lots planned. We're hoping to have a big uh, gala concert uh, at the end of our first week in July. We're hoping to invite uh, the founding fathers of this organization, one of whom is in Ireland, he's 88, still going strong, running his own music school there. So uh, we want to uh, make a time and place to honor these gentlemen. CV Arts President Anna Rambo invites all artists in the Valley to become members and support the arts. Come together to build a new community art centre. Since 1967, as an umbrella organisation, CV Arts has searched for a facility to serve and enhance the Comox Valley's cultural community and identity. The organisation puts on many community events but needs a space accessible to the greater community, a central facility to build the performing, visual arts and exhibition space together, with the Arts Council office and information resources under one roof. Building the heart of the community, 50 years in the making. In 2017, celebrate 50 years of Arts in the Valley. Make a splash. You'll see umbrellas and gumboots popping up all over the valley, painted by local artists. Throughout 2017, join CV Arts Celebrate decades of art and volunteerism that have united our community and lit the way forward for young creators coming up for the next 50 years. In the Comox Valley, I am Kate Brown. Peter Jackson gets up in the morning, 5 a.m., and draws before going to work at the construction site. Inspired by his art teacher, who introduced Peter to the diversity of line and texture in drawing, and from drawing from your own imagination. I was really inspired by my art teacher, Dave Carlin. He was quite the character. He's a wonderful fellow. A uh, real free spirit, real free soul. A, a man of the 60s, you could say. <laughs> He's a very, very cool cat. But uh, he never, even in his teaching, he never tried to say there was a formula. Like there are certain things in order to sit down and get something, this is what you must do, which is understandable. But he was never, a, for want of a better expression, a ball buster. As a kid, Peter loved to carve and draw. He would pick up a rock and see all kinds of forms of light, texture and shapes. This excited him to sketch and draw. Yeah, ever since I was a little kid, not I, 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 carved, I've drawn. I'm, I'm one of those guys that picks up a rock and looks at it and goes, okay, fine, let's see what we can find in it. And hopefully there's something, and there usually is. Peter's passion and relaxation is drawing from its own imagination. He's free to draw whatever he likes. He has books and books of drawings, of ideas, thoughts, and whimsical illustrations. It's an animated surrealistic impressionism. Okay. <laughs> it's a whole bunch of stuff. Right. But it's true. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a drawing, uh, it, it, it's, it's animated, it's surrealistic because I don't know anywhere in the world where this stuff comes from. And it's impressionistic in the sense that what kind of an impression does it leave upon? I mean, I mean, I look at it sometimes myself and it leaves specific impressions. Nothing to draw? Let your imagination loose. I think the greatest critics I'll ever have in the world are little kids. <laughs> Stop some dead in the tracks. Oh, really? that, oh, absolutely. What are you doing? And they look at it and they just get these big, big eyes and they pick things out and this is this and this is that. And isn't that wonderful? I had a young fellow who used to come in regularly with his mother. And he would have been, what, five, six, something like that? And he would critique my work for me. Really? He was a young artist, so yeah. He would sit there and he'd tell me what he liked and what he didn't like, what he thought was fantastic. And I thought to myself, like, this is so cool. <laughs> I hold on to the pen and go for the ride. In the Comox Valley, I am Kate Brown. <laughs>